thing about urinary tract infection being very common in children. So, what are the most common symptoms of urinary tract infection? Symptoms of urine infection. Um, you, we need to understand that urine infections in children, uh, when we talk of children, we de deal with children less than one year of age as well as children between one to 12 years of age. So only older children will be able to tell you symptoms that come up. Whereas in a younger child, the symptoms may be very obscure uh, and very subtle. So the parents need to be very alert to that. And one of the common symptoms which we stress upon is the presence of fever without any other focus. Suggesting that if the child has fever without a cough and a cold or without loose motions or without something else to explain the fever, then that could be a urine infection. Older children will be able to give you complaints like uh, pass, uh, they are passing urine more frequently or there is pain while they are passing urine. They may they also exhibit high grade fever. They may have abdominal pain. But these are, as I said, more common in older children. In younger children, you need to be very uh, suspicious of any fever without a focus. So how does one prevent UTIs? Okay. I think we need to first understand the causes of urinary tract infections. And for this, we need to understand that the whole world has gone through a complete cycle. If you go back about 40, 50 years, uh, the focus was on more investigations so that we pick up urine infections in children and try and prevent kidney damage. Now that circle has turned because now people are realizing that it's not more investigations, but we need to understand some basic concepts. And the common causes for urine infection don't lie in expensive investigations, but actually in very simple things. For example, if a child doesn't drink enough water, you don't wash your bladder enough. If you don't wash your bladder, you get urine infections. It's as simple as that. Because voiding is the biggest defense mechanism that we have. And with voiding, you eliminate bacteria as well as the cells that the bacteria get attached to. And if you don't do that often, bacteria are allowed a free growth. That comes along with voiding. So if you don't drink enough water, you don't pass urine frequently. If you don't pass urine at least once in four hours, then you're at a risk of getting urine infections. So this is the second point that needs to be stressed for parents. And following this comes the fact that those who retain urine, the children who retain urine are usually do so because they are constipated. They don't go to toilet frequently and that is the reason why they don't pass urine frequently as well. And constipation comes up not just because of inadequate dietary habits or improper dietary habits, but also because of inadequate intake of fluids. So it's a vicious cycle that goes round and round. So unless this is broken, these children are going to keep on getting urine infections again and again. So that's what needs to be addressed in these children so that you can prevent the infections. But they have to drink water itself, right? As in, they cannot, sometimes parents tend to substitute water with juices and, you know, juices I don't think it matters as to what you drink. Okay. Any fluid that goes in, and I think the, um, the old adage that you need to drink about eight glasses of water is probably true for adults. You, know, you can't force a child to drink eight glasses of water. The simple thing for parents to remember is a child who's between 10 to 15 kilos needs to take about one liter of fluids every day. And if he doesn't take that, then the risk of urine infections is high. And these are the very basic concepts. There are other factors that cause uh, or play a role in urine infections, but I think these are the most important factors. More than 90% of infections will be prevented as long as we take care of these factors, which I call as local factors, some other people call it as bowel bladder disturbances. So this habit has to be consciously ingrained in the kid, I guess, because uh, these days kids go to schools which have ACs and then they don't go out and play that much like we used to. So they don't feel thirsty all that much. So It's, it's one of the good food habits that we talk about. Apart from junking junk food, we also need to ensure that they have an adequate intake of fluids. And as you rightly said, yes, it needs to be ingrained in the child. But you will usually find that the children follow the parents' examples. If the parents don't drink, the child is unlikely to drink enough water. Is it also likely that uh, kids catch urinary tract infections from using dirty toilets and all that? No, I think that's one of the fears that children have. The, there's no evidence that dirty toilets lead to urine infections in children. It's just that dirty toilets make children not void urine. And as I explained earlier, because they don't void urine regularly, they get urine infections. So I think even if the toilet is dirty, they need to go and void urine. That's more important. 
So, uh, doctor, why are UTIs so dangerous? I mean, why should the parents take it so seriously? Seriously, correct. Now, urinary tract infections are of two different categories. One where it is limited to the bladder and you get only symptoms, but it actually does not reach the kidneys. And the second condition where it actually reaches the kidneys and is called as pyelonephritis. Now, innumerable studies have shown that if you have pyelonephritis, which means that the infection has reached the kidneys, then you can leave behind permanent damage in the kidneys. So if you get repeated episodes of pyelonephritis, you can damage your kidneys and eventually your kidney function can suffer in the long term. That is the reason why urine infections are important. The second problem, if you have left, you left behind with some damage in the kidneys, you're more likely to develop high blood pressure. So as the child grows, the tendency to develop hy uh, hypertension or high blood pressure is much higher in these children. So these are the two most important reasons why urine infections are dangerous in children and need to be treated appropriately. So how do you treat your patients with urinary tract infections? As I said, I mean there are various guidelines given about treatment of urine infections. The most important aspect for parents is to make sure that the child has a urine infection because if you've got a condition that mimics urine infection, you will be unnecessarily giving antibiotics to the child. For example, you can have, as we just discussed, redness in the genital area which itself can cause symptoms of pain uh, while passing urine which will be misinterpreted as urine infection. All the tests will be abnormal and you will be treating the child for a urine infection. So as long as that is not there, then there are proper guidelines about treating urine infection. The other condition is the one we just talked about which is called as an irritable bladder. So you need to rule out that these conditions are not there. Then the focus of treating a urine infection is antibiotics. Um, in Children who are well, we tend to use oral antibiotics where they can tolerate oral antibiotics. But in very young children, with less than six months of age, and in patients who cannot tolerate oral antibiotics as they are vomiting, they will need to be admitted for intravenous antibiotics. Now, along with this, all the precautions that we said earlier need to be followed. It's not just the antibiotics that make the child better. You need to make sure the child drinks enough water and passes a lot of urine. So uh, there are various guidelines given about what antibiotics to use and how, what length of duration. It's all available for pediatricians everywhere. Doctor, these days, uh, most parents use diapers for the kids, you know, almost the whole day the kids are in diapers. Does this cause urinary infections as well? No, because if that were the case, the entire Western population should be getting urine infections daily, which doesn't happen. So I don't think Diapers themselves are cause of urine infections. Diapers can lead to decreased ventilation in that area and therefore you can get redness. Yeah. And if you get redness, then that can be misinterpreted as a urine infection. So you need to treat the local inflammation or skin inflammation that you're seeing rather than a urine infection. We see a lot of kids going to the loo very often. I mean, what kind of problem is this? Does this indicate a urinary infection? No. That's a very good question because every class will have about two or three children where you find that they have to go out, run, ask the teacher to go to the toilet and very often the teacher will not allow them to go to the toilet and they will wet themselves and it's a big problem for mothers because they go back home and the underwear is wet. Now these children actually do not have a urine infection if they don't have any other symptoms like fever and the tests are normal. What they have is what is called as an irritable bladder where the bladder is perceiving that it's full even when it's not and therefore the signals are being sent to the brain that you need to go and void. Therefore the child has to pass urine more frequently. There is also urgency because the signal that goes off says that you've got a lot of urine in the bladder even though, you, even though the child hasn't got urine and therefore the child wets himself or herself before the child reaches the toilet. So this is a benign condition in itself meaning that it will not usually cause problems in the kidneys and it can be treated very simply. I and mean, some of the conditions can be treated by stopping very basic things like fizzy drinks because they tend to exacerbate this or sugary drinks tend to exacerbate this frequency of voiding. So some additives in the... Yes, they tend to make it worse. For more such information related to your health, log on to health.india.com.